It's just not about taking tests. I want you to focus. See that the cycle should be like this. You take tests, you analyze tests. From analyzing, you, you get to know what your strengths and weaknesses are or anything that you need to cover it up. So I'll tell you how that can be done. So I'm saying strengthen your strengths and work a bit on your weakness on the areas that you are good at on the same areas that you are good at. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. And then once again, take tests. This has to be a continuous process. I'll say from now to the actual exam, you should at least take 10 to 15 tests. That's going to be the key. That's going to be the key. Now, 10 to 15 tests. And now the question is, how do you analyze? Let me show you a simple example. Imagine you have taken a test, maths, physics, chemistry. You have say 25 questions each. And out of these 25 questions in the real time in a test condition, you got say you have uh, attempted 18 questions and you did not attempt seven questions at all. And from these 18 questions, imagine you got 12 of them right and six of them wrong. Right now, how do we analyze? I want you to go question after question. First question, second question, third question. So each of these question can fall into any of these categories. Imagine the first category, you know, let's assume you picked up first question and you have not attempted that question. So not attempted. This is the not attempted question. These are the attempted ones. Now in the non attempted, if you actually observe, when you go to that question, you might realize, Hey, this was an easy question. I knew how to solve this, but in a real time exam situation, I skipped that question. So here at times what happens is we lose out on some easy questions, which you should have attempted. Now, maybe out of seven, you might not realize this for all, but you will definitely realize for one or two questions or maybe three questions. It's very important to realize that because that was a question of your area of strength, but you just skipped it in a hurry. You really need to know that you are skipping such questions. Because when you know that this is the mistake that you made, you will not repeat it. Maybe next time what happens is these one or two, three questions go out there. Now let's look at the questions that you have solved. Now out of these 12 questions that you got correct, you might realize out of that there may be around two or three questions wherein you have spent a lot of lot of time. You spent more time than required. On an average, when you're supposed to spend only two minutes per question, imagine here for this, these couple of questions in this segment where you got right, you spend maybe five to six minutes solving one problem. So if you realize that next time you will not attempt such questions here, you have not attempted a few, few questions, which you should have attempted. And here you have attempted a few questions, which you wasted a lot of time. Now, how do you realize this? You realize this when you do continuous analysis of all the questions. Now, the point is what happens to these questions when you went wrong? You attempted that question. That means you're good at that area, but still you made a mistake. Why did you make a mistake? Okay. It could be a conceptual mistake. Maybe conceptually you went wrong somewhere or it could be a calculation mistake. Now, if it's a calculation mistake, if you realize that you are making such calculation mistakes or some silly mistakes, which a typical IIT is not supposed to make, right? So if you want to be really going there and be an IIT, can you afford to make a lot of silly mistakes? Trust me, you cannot. So when you realize that you are making these kind of mistakes, trust me, these six, the mistakes that are going say today here out of six out of 18, you are making 33% of your questions as wrong. If you can reduce it to maybe say 10% or 15%, imagine how your score will jump. So in short, what I'm saying is if you, if you work on this analysis on a regular basis, let me show you how it looks like. Maybe, you know, out of these 25 questions today, because you spend more time on few questions and you did not attempt some easy ones, maybe from 25, when you attempted only 18, your graph looks a little different. Let me show you how your graph might look at that point in time. Now, the numbers should look like this. Imagine from this 25, 
Now, because of your regular analysis, instead of 18, you are able to attempt 20. Why are you able to do that? Let me recollect the thoughts that I shared with you. You are able to attempt more because you will stop reducing time that you are spending on few lengthy questions and you are focusing on picking up the easy ones. This is a test taking strategy. Learn how to pick easy ones quickly and don't waste time on the difficult ones which are not required. Are you going to get extra marks for a question just because it is tough? They'll give you more marks? Not really. So the point is focus on the good ones, easy ones, easy to solve, quickly solve and focus on the, your strengths. Now, let's assume you are skipping five questions. Fair enough. They're the tough ones which you are skipping in an exam because here in the given time you have to maximize your score. That is the first development that will happen. Next, if you look at out of 12 and 6, maybe now this 12 will become maybe 16 and this will become 4. Now from 33% mistake, you are moving to maybe just 20% of it are wrongs, incorrect and you are getting 80% accuracy. Awesome. And that's where you need to head from this particular picture. You can do this only, only, only when you analyze and keep working on your strengths, strengthening your strengths and working on your weakness. When I say working on your weakness, the few concepts which are critical have high weightage, but if there is some weakness, you are conceptually going wrong. It's very important for you to focus on that concept. You already know it. It's all about there are some conceptual errors that you are making. Focus on that. Improve on your conceptual errors. That means when I say improve on conceptual errors, don't think that you need to improve your number of errors. That's not the point. The point is you reduce on your errors and start scoring more. When it comes to calculation, you will keep avoiding it if you know that this is the kind of silly mistakes you make. If you do that, that's where you are. And trust me, this is what you need to do now because during board exams, you anyways, between each exam, you have two to three days to revise question and answers. And conceptually, if you're good, writing a board exam and doing well is not difficult. And anyways, even today, you're going to spend 60% of your time on board exams. All the best, both for your board exams. And I'm sure using this analysis, you'll do a great job in JE mains as well. Wonderful. All the best.